In this video, we'll look at electron configurations for some of the exceptions that we find to that general pattern for electron configurations. We'll look first at chromium and molybdenum. These two exceptions, they're similar to each other. And that's not really surprising if we look at the periodic table. Here's chromium right here, and then below it, molybdenum. So let's look at this exception, these two exceptions first. When we look at chromium, we can see that we almost have the 3D4, one electron in each box here. But the last box doesn't have any. And down here for molybdenum, it's the same deal. We have four, it's almost half filled. And what we find is that with half filled d orbitals, that's much more stable than we have this partially filled d orbital. So in both cases, we're going to take an electron from the 4s and move it over. So let's do that. So that'll change these numbers here. We'll now have 3d5, 4s1, down here 4d5, 5s1. So this is a much more stable electron configuration when we have this d orbital half filled. The s orbital is half filled, but that really isn't much of a problem for s orbitals. It's still fairly stable. So these are the correct electron configurations for chromium and molybdenum, two exceptions to the general pattern for electron configurations. Let's take a look at copper and silver. So for copper and silver, let's look at the periodic table again here. Here's copper, silver, and then gold. So these all follow the same general pattern here. If we look at this, instead of the half filled, we have almost completely full. If we could move one more electron over here, the d orbitals, that would be full. Same down here. Instead of the 3d, we could make the 4d full. So let's do that. Let's move an electron over here. And down here, we'll move one as well. So again, that'll change these numbers here. Let's do that. We moved one here. So instead of 3d9, we have 3d10. This will be 4s1. And then here, we'll have 3d10 and 5s1. So this is more stable. We have the d orbitals all full now. The s, that's not full, but it's okay. Down here again, 4d, that's full as well. So these are the correct electron configurations for copper and silver. Two more exceptions, and these guys follow a pattern as well. If you need help writing out the electron configurations for chromium, copper, silver, or molybdenum, there are links to videos that explain it in depth in the description of this video. This is Dr. B with some exceptions to the electron configurations that we would find on the periodic table. Thanks for watching.